Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show once again uh, on this uh, particular day. Uh, well, what I'm going to do, we are going to see uh, what are the, uh, I mean, what are the news headlines uh, that are going on as far as world cricket is concerned. Uh, we don't have any international uh, cricket matches uh, being played. Uh, what I'm going to really cover is uh, the DRS system. Now, DRS system, uh, there has been a lot of debate going on after the first test match between Pakistan and Sri Lanka, uh, the ICC uh, were probably recommending that the DRS system uh, should be implemented. Uh, the only problem is that India is not in support of it and the former cricketer and, uh, and the now cricket commentator um, from, uh, I mean from Australia basically, uh, he is a part of the Channel 9 cricket team Tony Gregg, one of these exciting cricket commentators and one of my favorites as far as uh, cricket commentary is concerned. Uh, it has been a real inspiration for me um, that whenever I, I, I love uh, watching, I mean, I love uh, hearing uh, Tony Gregg's uh, cricket commentary because he brings a lot of excitement into the game and is one of those exciting cricket commentators in the cricket world today. And Tony Gregg, I have due respect for him. Well, he's a very knowledgeable person. He knows what he's speaking. And well, he has come uh, come very very strongly uh, against uh, India. Uh, the reason he has said that India is uh, basically very very self-centered, uh, which he has uh, really come. This is in a, a spirit uh, cowdray lecture, uh, which was uh, delivered um, a spirit of uh, cricket lecture, and he has come very very strongly against India because India is the only team which is opposing the umpire decision review system, whereas all the other uh, cricketing teams are supporting it. Uh, well, uh, I would rather say that uh, I would be with the ICC because the umpire decision review system has to be implemented. There should be something fair. It should not be that one match you have a DRS, other match you don't have. We should have something uh, absolutely uniform and that's what. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically touch on um, uh, Mr. Uh, Tony Gregg's point, this exciting cricket commentator who has actually, actually blessed this cricketing world, I would say. So Tony Gregg uh, has mentioned that India is very, very self-centered. Uh, well, uh, in, in, I mean, uh, the basically what Tony Gregg feels is that he feels that India now uh, has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, they have that money power now. They are very powerful. He says that even India, if India rejects it, ICC also uh, doesn't really go ahead because India wields a tremendous clout as far as world cricket is concerned because they are one of those uh, very, very uh, rich cricket boards uh, in the country today. Uh, 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 rich cricket boards, uh, rich cricket board in the country. Now, what Tony Gregg says is that uh, India, uh, India, India should be towing the line of all other countries and supporting the umpire decision review system. Uh, now, that is something which BCCI has been, uh, as you know, the Board of Cricket uh, uh, Control for India has always been denying and has been refusing. And that's the precise reason the umpire decision review system has not been put in full measure. Even though ICC wants to do it, India is the one who is opposing it. Now, I agree with whatever Tony Gregg says, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, he, he says uh, that India should agree. Yes, I do agree there. But let me just uh, take you all to those old days. Uh, there was a time, and uh, now he says that India is wielding tremendous power and influence. No doubt about it. I do agree with Tony Gregg. As I said, I have a great respect for Tony Gray. But what I would like to really, really dwell on is that there was a time when this Indian cricket board uh, was, uh, I'm talking of the days when Sunny Gavaskar, uh, we had uh, Jimmy Amanath, Kapil Dev, uh, a lot of the other bowlers and batsmen who were there, a very great batsmen, uh, not in these years, uh, in the Esther year. Uh, well, in that 1980s, I would say, India were not a India were a very very poor cricket board. Uh, India were trying to garner funds. Uh, India was India's economy was not so good at that particular time. But in a decade, uh, India India's economy has really boomeranged. It has gone to uh, a top notch uh, position as far as uh, economy is concerned. Now what it does, and also the cricketers who have been coming, even from uh, cricketers from villages. Like if you see Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni is coming from a middle class family in a place called Jharkhand. But what, he, what difference he has made to world cricket, one would know. 
So that is what uh, cricket has enabled and that's what uh, an atmosphere has been created as far as uh, cricket is concerned in India. Now that is all for the good. Now if you remember uh, during those times uh, the Indian cricket board was not so rich as it is now. And whenever India used to put a proposal, I do remember in the ICC when I used to play my, I used to follow cricket in those, um, my school days and college days, I used to remember ICC footing proposals and Australia, England and certain other countries uh, really ratifying the proposal. Uh, but and as and when India or uh, India or any of the Asian countries used to put a proposal, it was vetoed. Now, I am not trying to find out any excuses. What I am telling is, at that time, India didn't have that powerful influence and uh, there was no support. So India basically had to just, uh, you know, uh, cow down, uh, be, being told what to do. They were doing that and ICC had its own. At that time, Australia as a powerful country was dominating. Uh, I hope Tony Gray, uh, our expert cricket commentator, definitely knows about it. But I would like to elude uh, this, uh, saying that uh, that was once upon a time. So. Uh, I, I can understand that at that time India didn't wield a tremendous clout as far as world cricket is concerned but today things have really changed for India as I said and India definitely definitely wields powerful clout but yes I do I do agree with one thing and that is what Tony Gregg says that not about the self-centered because I wouldn't really agree with that but what I would say is that Indian cricket board has to come forward and really really come to a consensus and uh, basically, I think they should support all the other countries uh, and also ICC's view that Empire Edition Review System has to be introduced. I, I feel strongly about it, uh, but I wish you know that uh, Indian Board of uh, Control for Cricket in India changes its mind and uh, toes the proposal put forward by the ICC and other countries as regards the Empire Edition Review System, and we start uh, seeing uh, world cricket uh, in a real, real new light. Okay. Now let's uh, shift the attention here to real cricket. Yesterday, as you know, there was a tour game which was played just before the One Day International Series. This was played at Chelmsford between the Australians, the touring Australians, and Essex. And Australians had a massive victory here by 179 runs. 50 overs, Australia notched up 313 for 9. Uh, they were driven by Shane Watson who made 32 of 27 balls with 6 fours and 1 six. David Warner contributed 26 of 24 balls with 3 fours and 1 six. Rob Bailey was the one who went to miss out. He was out for 12 of 18 balls with 2 fours. Michael Clark, the captain, retired hurt on 76 of 73 balls with 9 fours. David Hussey contributed a good 67 of 66 balls with 6 fours. Stephen Smith made 30 of 31 balls with 1 four. Matthew Wade waded into the attack, making 47 of 43 balls with 4 fours and 1 six. And uh, Brett Lee uh, hit one final. Uh, Last one six of the final ball, 14 of 13 balls, 1 4 and 1 6, and 313 for 9 for Australia on the board. They really went after the Essex balling, which was not really, didn't have much of teeth, I would say. Graham Napier went to the cleaners, 2 for 71 for him. Mills, none for 51. Topley, who was the most successful here, was nominated in 4 for 46. He looked impressive. Ranton Doshap, 9 overs for 46. Tim Phillips, the left arm spinner, 9 overs went for 49 runs and 2 wickets, and Smith bowled 7 overs for 48. For Essex, the target of 314 proved to be uh, quite, uh, quite huge and uh, they succumbed to the pressure being 134 all out. The credit goes to the bowlers. Brett 6.4 overs, 1 made in 16 runs and 1 wicket. Clint McKay, 5 overs, 1 made in 27 runs and 1 wicket. Patrick Cummins uh, was the successful, most successful 7 overs, 26 runs and 3 wickets for him. And Shane Watson, 6 overs, 1 made in 1 for 26. And Doherty, 8 overs, 1 made in 2 for 38. So the batting and the bowling has come to the fore for Australia. And uh, this is just on the eve of the one-day international series which is going to kick off between Australia and England. So Australia will be going in with lots of confidence into the one-day international series. As far as Essex were concerned, Alistair Cook made uh, 5 or 15 balls, so that was a failure. Bettini contributed only 1. Wesley made 4. Ravi Papara was the highest scorer with 39 of 54 balls with 6 fours. 41 comings from Foster of 36 balls with 6 fours. Ranton Doshat was run out for 15. And uh, well, there's nothing. Graham Napier couldn't contribute much. He was out for eight, uh, and Tim Phillips was run out for ten. And uh, Topley made two, and Mills not out on two. It was all over. And um, in fact, Australia had having a crushing victory over the uh, Essex uh, team at Chelmsford. Well, uh, dear fans, friends, and subscribers, um, 
Uh, let me see whether there is there anything else uh, that I could cover. Uh, if at all, I would definitely speak about that. I'm just trying to see whether is there anything else uh, that I could really put on. Well, uh, I don't have much to say, uh, dear fans, friends and subscribers. Um, also, uh, if you have time, uh, just go and uh, read the spirit of lecture uh, delivered by Tony Gregg, where he says that India is self-centered and, uh, you know, that is something that India has to shake. That's what Tony Gregg's opinion is. But as I said, I have due respect for this wonderful and an expert cricket commentator and an exciting cricket commentator that Mr. Tony Gregg, who once played for England and then um, he's a South African who played for England and then he was South African born playing for England and then he shifted at allegiance to Australia after going into the Kerry Packers series and becoming a very, very famed uh, part of this uh, quartet of the Channel 9 cricket team uh, which normally does the cricket commentary from Australia. And uh, uh, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, he is one of those doyen of cricket commentators. And as I said, uh, in, uh, the world cricket commentary is really blessed by Tony Gregg, such an exciting cricket commentator and one of my inspirations as far as cricket commentary is concerned. Well, on this note, uh, dear friends, as I said, I have no, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm no one to do that. I'm just talking very plain and simple. I just wanted to analyze what Tony Gregg said, but I also wanted to take him to the fact that there was a time when India didn't field such powerful clout which they wield right now. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings in a very, very patient way. Your host Ram returning you to the studios. Thank you.